So everyone is asking us to talk about Bakugo's death. You, you, her, him, you, and more. I don't need sleep. I need answers. However, Bakugo's death is only the beginning because we also found evidence why All for One is shitting bricks envisioning the second user of One for All. Let's be honest, your first reaction was probably fucking biblical. Because in chapter 362, the second user gives him Vietnam flashbacks because he looks awfully similar to Bakugo. What if I told you this all links back to Deku and the final quirk holding the secret to defeat all for one yes. yes you heard that right we have figured out the final quirk the ending and what bakugo's death means so make sure to be a chad and hit the notification bell because we are delivering the content you require because you are that important to us so the seeds are set for the final chapter of my hero academia and the vision endeavor for soul with all the characters grown up as the number one heroes. The first seed is Shigaraki and All for One. The fusion has created a demon lord, a new creation that is as powerful as Prime All Might with multiple quirks. He's the perfect ideal for the final boss of this series. It's the final villain's tale as mentioned in chapter 362. This brings the story full circle as All for One told his brother that he will become the demon lord from the comics they read as children and he would make that world a reality. Which, uh, you know, everyone that is a fan of the boys, my good old friend Butcher, he puts it like this. With great power comes the absolute certainty that you'll turn into a right kind. The second seed is Deku having to save Shigaraki and fulfill the promise he made in chapter 305. He told Nana that he saw a crying child that wanted to be saved, which chapter 361 highlighted once again. Shigaraki is drowned by the hands of manipulation. And lastly, the final seed is Bakugo's secret relationship to one for all. And the second user. In chapter 362, it is shown that Bakugo's heart has exploded, or at least it stopped. Whilst Bakugo is on death's door, we see some glimpses that he does indeed have a connection to One for All and its vestiges. This will shape how Deku unlocks the second quirk and uses it. As we all witness, Bakugo has gained a power rivaling One for All. His quirk has awakened as he now outspeeds Shigaraki who is stated to be an equal to Prime All Might but this was all at the cost of burdening himself with too much power. His new power is an evolution of explosion creating tiny spheres of sweat around his entire body spreading to every gland. This is similar to Deku's full cowling, as Bakugo felt power surging throughout his entire body when he first used it, causing pain everywhere. There is a reason Bakugo is pushing himself this hard, as it all links back to his relationship with Deku and one for all. And that is because the second user is an ancestor of Bakugo. <laughs> You're all probably wondering why can Bakugo see All Might's vestige? The first reason is because Bakugo actually inherited one for all from Deku in the Heroes Rising movie. A lot of fans don't realize that the events that occurred were actually canon as the villain named Nine was mentioned by Shigaraki in the official manga. The quirk factors of each of the previous users of one for all have merged with the core and the vestiges are made up of the DNA. This refers to the collective physical and genetic traits that compose a person's quirk. Bakugo's DNA was instilled into the vestige world that the quirk created. However, he fell unconscious and the will of the users wanted Deku to have one for all back. This is because One for All's true power can only be wielded by a quirkless person, mentioned in chapter 304. Secondly, Bakugo is the ancestor of the second user, so his quirk factor genetics is very similar to him. Bakugo can see All Might's vestige because in chapter 304, we learned that amongst all the past users of One for All, All Might was the only one who was able to imbue One for All with a true piece of his consciousness. So this explains how Bakugo is connected to the second user of One for All. But then 
Why is all for one shit and breaks and is scared of him? I'm confused! I'm confused right now, G! Well, Bakugou dying thinks about how this way of fighting is just like how Deku fights. He acknowledges the fact that he is behind Deku and wonders if he will ever reach his powers of being a shonen protagonist. Bakugou at first looked upon All Might as a figure to measure his goals, but as he came to understand what he was lacking as a hero and what he needed to become number one, Deku became a beacon of light and a new goalpost for him. This moment really illustrates Bakugo's growth as ever since he was little he was pampered to think that he was the best a golden child like his mother Mitsuki mentioned however throughout his upbringing Bakugo witnessed a quirkless pussy ass Deku crying all the time who outwardly appeared so weak acting brave and heroic this angered Bakugo as it triggered his inferiority complex he knew he was gifted but deep down he was lacking the ideals all Might possessed, the person he idolized and the reason he wanted to become a hero. When Bakugo joined UA, he got a reality check and realized that he no longer was on top of this world, especially when the one who was chosen by the hero he admired the most was Deku. This manifested as hate, where Bakugo from a friend turned into a bully. He thought Deku was always inferior to him and literally told him to die in chapter 1. This caused him to continue continuously express himself through anger in an explosive manner. Sweat can symbolize a lot of things everyone, whether that be hard work, focus or intensity. But in Bakugo's case, it represents the pressure society puts on him as someone with talent to constantly be ahead of everyone else and prove your superiority to not fall behind. We see this in Bakugo time and time again, and quite literally in the first war. He would fly faster than Deku on purpose just to arrive in the battle against Shigaraki before him. However, the mistakes made from his hard-headed attitude caused him to experience pain that would make him self-reflect. Bakugo blamed himself for All Might's downfall in Season 2, which makes him have an emotional outburst. He couldn't accept that he took down his idol. And similarly, now that Deku is ahead of him and is the new symbol of peace, he doesn't want to be the downfall of him. That's why he's pushing himself beyond his his limits in chapter 362. He saw this quality in both Deku and All Might. Bakugo admits in chapter 362 that he is behind him and it shows that he has learnt to let go of his ego and previous mentality, to always be on top and learning that there is more to being a hero than just being strong. He even mentions this to the next generation of kids in chapter 166, telling them to learn from your mistakes and not to look down on others. Bakugo embracing his weaknesses is the same as the first user of One For All, embracing his in the past and realizing that he actually needs help to take down his brother. No one is perfect and everyone is flawed, but the friendship that they all have binds them together as a pulling force that can have a strong enough willpower to go up against All For One. In the flashback of chapter 284, Bakugo opened up to All Might out of all people to explain how he feels for Deku and why he is so hard on him. He actually loves Deku like a brother and figured out that he was just insecure and to atone for his sins and past behavior towards him, Bakugo will do whatever it takes to help him. This is personified in chapter 362. Bakugo before putting his life on the line thinks back to Deku, this time on a first name basis respecting him. I gotta win, right Izuku? Bakugo with his resolve is a able to put All For One on edge, making him think back to the second user of One For All. This is Horikoshi's way of foreshadowing Bakugo and the second user's relationship. The second user was the one who pushed the first user, Yoichi, to fight his evil brother. He never gave up and held the hand of Yoichi when he was in the greatest of despair and hopelessness. This action was paralleled by Bakugo in chapter 322, being the person to break Deku's despair and catch him in his greatest needs, leading the group to save him. 
This all comes full circle as the second user is the reason One For All was created in the first place. His quirk combined with Yoichi's quirk to birth it. The second user understands that inaction is not an option against All For One. He tells Deku he isn't doing the wrong thing by taking action and going rogue, but also understands that in his heart, Bakugo would come through and bring him back. That is how important Bakugo's relationship is to Deku and the final chapter of My Hero Academia, as without him, Deku would still stubbornly keep walking the lonely path. The other vestiges went through this lonely path as well and lost to all for one. They know it's wrong and it doesn't work anymore. The most recent being Nana Shimura proving that. She isolated her family and ditched them to take on all for one on her own. But that's what continued the cycle of failure, manipulation and also her grandson going down the wrong path. In the end, All For One has noticed that Bakugo is important to Deku, which is why he wants to murder him. It all equates to breaking Deku's will. Bakugo at his deathbed communicates with All Might due to the eternal conflict he was struggling through. He missed his chance to ask All Might on the one thing he dreamt of since he was a little boy, which was for All Might to sign his card that he got in his childhood with Izuku Midoriya. This moment signifies not only the innocence within Bakugo but also the good times he had with Deku as kids before he let his ego ruin their friendship. From chapter 284 we can see that Bakugo may not be able to have the conversation he wanted as All Might prompted him to tell Deku that he was sorry about his actions. Alright so now that we've cleared up everybody's confusion let's talk about what the second user's quirk is that Deku has to unlock to save the world. World. Through the ancestor, we have figured out that the second user's quirk is adrenaline. What? Yes, we believe that the second user's quirk might have something to do with boosting one's power. It is stated that it is a last resort that has grown in strength over the years into a very unique power that is difficult to control. This would be because adrenaline activates the body's fight or flight instincts, putting the user into overdrive, making your heart beat faster and dilating your airways to give muscles oxygen to fight or flee. This, however, takes a huge toll on your body as after the high comes down, your body crashes. This is why the second user told Deku not to use the quirk to travel faster to reach Shigaraki in chapter 349 because an overdose of adrenaline risks a heart attack, stroke, high blood pressure and palpitations. All things which aren't really ideal to have before the biggest fight of your life. However, the increased effect of the adrenaline quirk after generations of evolution will give Deku the ability to fight at 100% full power, because it will give him a massive boost in all of his stats with the trade-off of rendering him weaker afterwards. It's kinda like the eight gates from Naruto. Even during the first war, Deku was breaking his arms and legs whilst fighting, and the story has already stated that this was the final time he could take such a risk before his body will just completely break on him. So, unlike in the first war against Shigaraki when he used 100% one for all and he was hurting himself a lot and breaking his arms, halting his performance, Deku will now be able to go all out and outspeed the regeneration of the Demon Lord. With his training so far, Deku is using 100% only through his Fajin quirk, which is the faux version. It's not a true 100%. He's basically just using 45% and then adding the stored kinetic energy generated by Fajin. And through this, he is then able to go at blinding speeds, giving the illusion of one for all at 100% with no recoil. But through a Adrenaline, this 100% true one for all can be achieved without any limits or pain. This scrapped volume cover also gives us an idea of what this fight or flight induced Deku could look like as the deaths of those he loves give him the rage to fight at maximum power. Now you may be thinking that this quirk sounds way too powerful as it is stated in chapter 257 that each of the quirks are support based. You know all of the quirks are weak ones, they're not firepower or something extravagant by any means. However keep in mind that the adrenaline 
Adrenaline Quirk is the oldest of the whole lot. The second user is from the first generation that faced all for one, which would be about 120 to 150 years ago. Therefore, the most improved quirk of one for all would be the seconds. You see, 120 years ago, the boost from the adrenaline would be much, much less. With adrenaline, you don't instantly develop superhuman strength, but you do suddenly have access to all of your muscles' potential, which your body typically inhibits you from doing so. For example, this woman lifted an entire car to save her child due to adrenaline. That's why Deku has to use this quirk as a last resort and use 100% one for all at all times when it's active. In chapter 349, the second user even states to Deku that it can't be wielded like the way he did in the past, because adrenaline at this point would be like taking 10 lines of cocaine causing immediate damage to yourself. This is due to the quirk's singularity, which was mentioned 70 years ago. Dr. Garaki presented this theory as the generations follow one another, quirks blend and evolve, producing stronger and more complex quirks. However, with this increase in power, the quirks will also become more difficult to control, since the human body doesn't evolve quickly enough to keep up. Eventually, there will come a time when quirks will become too overpowered and complicated, and no one will be able to control them anymore. Which is why in chapter 304, the One For All users said that Deku is the final user of the quirk, because finding someone quirkless after this generation would be impossible. And so he has to be the one that ends All For One's century long reign now. Therefore, the second user's gauntlets were just a foreshadowing of what his quirk would evolve into as it becomes more explosive. Even the atomic makeup of adrenaline and nitroglycerin use the same elements of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. As we mentioned before, we know that the second user is from like 120 years ago, which means there's been at least three to four generations that have passed by since then. Therefore, the quirk singularity would have been taken effect. Quirks are inherited genetically through the Mendelian inheritance. A child will either inherit the father's quirk, the mother's quirk, or a completely new quirk formed by a fusion of the two. Bakugo's mother Mitsuki has the quirk Glycerin and looks exactly like him and the second user, which means she's from his lineage. When genetically combined with her husband's acidic sweat, it resulted in an explosion quirk which is used by Bakugo. The second user's adrenaline quirk would have been mixed up with another quirk evolving over generations into producing nitroglycerin through sweat. Scientifically, this would also make sense. Adrenaline just needs to lose a benzenide radical and a nitrogen to make glycerin. And so, if the second user had adrenaline, which equates to this, throughout the generations that led to Bakugo's mother, the adrenaline had to react with something which made it split into glycerin plus benzenide. And we know this is very possible in the My Hero world, as Bakugo himself was able to get nitroglycerin with the combination of his parents' quirks. If everything I've just said has blown your mind, then make sure you check out this video on your screen right now.